Hey guys, my name is Shy, and this is the weekly reading for the end of May, beginning of June. Today we have two major things going on at the same time. It is the Mars-Jupiter conjunction in Aries, and tonight it's the Gemini new moon. I know a lot of you are probably watching this a few days after I post it. This energy will still be echoing throughout the week. There's not really um, anything else in terms of the planets happening until the end of the week when Mercury goes direct and then or, and then Saturn goes retrograde. So they're kind of switching out. I think I want to talk about those basically next week because then we'll be in the energy of them and we'll kind of know what's up because Saturn retrograde is a big topic, but I don't, it's not really like relevant for the beginning of the week. That's going to be next week, right? Next week when, when Saturn retrograde hits. So I think what I want to do is just get some cards because I'm feeling like really not talkative, <laughs> feeling feeling untalkative. I feel very like silent and quiet in, in a really, really good way, like in the best way possible. I feel so peaceful and tranquil and I've just had an amazingly peaceful weekend doing essentially nothing, <laughs> just kind of floating around in a dream. <laughs> um... And it kind of occurs to me that the energy of this new moon and the side-by-side -side energy of the Mars-Jupiter conjunction in Aries, um, I mean, that that's not the whole story about why I'm feeling so floaty and peaceful, right? But it's definitely part of it. It's part of the kind of, um, you know, energetic ecosystem I'm in at the moment, but it occurs to me that 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 same influence that is helping me to feel so just like zoned out. I just feel so peaceful and zoned out. Like my soul has, it feels like my soul has finished a big exhale and it's like a moment of pause holding the exhale before the, before like a big inhale, right? But it occurs to me that this same kind of background vibe can be, could be making somebody else, um, just depending on where you're at, right? It can be making somebody else feel um, different things like, you know, disconnection, loneliness, um, confusion, just just feeling a little uh, like empty, right? Like uh, the, like the negative spectrum of empty. Because if you really think about it, right, um, like the feelings that we might call peaceful or tranquil, right, that's on the same spectrum of, as emptiness and loneliness. Because I've been very solitary. All weekend, my husband has been really busy working. I haven't, so I haven't really seen or talked to anybody. Um, so it's, I think it's worth considering how on, <laughs> like it's two sides of the same coin, loneliness, disconnection is the same, the opposite side, like the other end of the spectrum from solitude and tranquility and peace. And I think if you are feeling more in the less pleasant vibes of this energetic spectrum, if you can I, like I know it's possible, right? That doesn't mean it's easy, but I know it's possible to put your attention on just focusing on how peaceful and tranquil the solitude and the quiet is, right? Just try to enjoy it for what it is. Enjoy for what it is. That's how you can make the most of this. That's how you can make the most of this energy. I am really enjoying the fact that no water energy is really being emphasized. No water or earth energy, right? The sun and moon in Gemini, all that beautiful air energy. Um, and then Mars and Jupiter in Aries, all that fire energy. To me, that, that makes me feel like I've been dried out. <laughs> like I've been dried out, right? Because we had Taurus season with that incredible eclipse. The Scorp Well, two eclipses, right? But especially the Scorpio eclipse. That was so much heavy, dense earth and water energy. And it was like, blah, right? Uh, but like with now, right now, the air and fire energy is emphasized. And that makes me feel nice and nice and dried out. And I feel like I don't, I just don't need to have any intense emotions right now. That's why I feel like I'm just kind of floating on a breeze floating on a breeze and <sighs> if you can point your focus in that direction to feel like you're just floating on a breeze <laughs> oh I'm laughing because that's really funny the way <laughs> these cards jumped out <laughs> this is exactly what I was saying right because this five of wands you know five of wands traditionally can be 
like stress and tension and conflict and it can feel like chaos, right? But look, look at this particular Five of Wands. It always really interests me because she's sitting there as the eye of the storm. She's holding herself apart from the chaos and she's sitting in meditation, right? She's sitting in meditation and letting all of the like the conflict like dissipate, right? She's sitting in solitude, sitting in finding her inner peace, no matter what's going on around her, right? Um, and then with transformation coming in on top of that, she's walked into the temple of transformation and she's like seeing, like seeing the light, right? This light is coming down and she can transform herself into whatever she wants to be. So it's like, however you're feeling right now, a minute from now, you could feel like something else. Because I think we're still integrating those eclipses. I mean, because we're going to have another round of those eclipses in Scorpio season, right? Like it's a little bit less than six months from now. That's going to come around again. So this, this, the, the, whatever you just went through over the eclipses isn't entirely gone away. Um, you could still be working on integrating it. And I've, I've really noticed like how those eclipses initiated the potential for just a complete paradigm shift in your grounded physical life. I've really noticed me and my husband over the last couple of weeks, we've just kind of naturally shifted into kind of a new routine, new habits. Um, and they're pretty like mundane, like everyday type of things, but suddenly we, we just kind of like clicked into a new way of operating. That's not too dissimilar from how we were, but it feels better and it's more functional and it's healthier and it's just, just better, <laughs> essentially better in every way. And it feels more natural and it's just, it's just really good. So that's part of the Mars Jupiter conjunction, I think as well, because that's allowing this like purification and reset of your, your spark, right? A purification and reset of your spark. If I were to give a rather vague description of what that energy feels like to me, but that's the best way I can put it right now. What else we got? Three of swords. Yeah. So some people are, <laughs> are feeling, are feeling it right. When, when I was thinking that not everyone is like floating on a breeze right now. <laughs> um, yeah, because you could be feeling, feeling the loneliness, feeling the A feeling like the emotions, right? If you're, if you're feeling the emotions, if you're feeling it, if you're, if you're really feeling this, um, it just means that you're, you're not entirely dried out yet. Right. And why, why am I talking like that? Why am I saying like dried out so that that connects to like a thing I've been thinking about? Um, you know, I never really understood why, you know, in some ways of thinking the desert is considered to be really healing, right? To be really healing. That that's like a, a theme. <laughs> in places, right? The desert can be considered really healing. And I always thought that was kind of strange. I'm like, what is healing about the desert? Um, I would always associate healing with like something tropical, right? With lots of water and lushness and greenery, right? Um, but now that I've lived in the desert for like eight years now, yeah, it's almost exactly eight years. Um, I, I get it. I get why the desert is healing and it's, it's healing in a specific type of way. The desert is healing, um, in that, like, it, it's healing for people who have, like, just too many emotions rolling around <laughs> um, and they need to get their emotions, like, dried out. Like, that was me. Now I understand why I had to move to this place that I didn't ever really want to move to, right? Um, but literally just being out in the desert, like, walking out into the desert and there's nothing but sand and sun. And here we have sand and sun and sagebrush, right? So it's sand and sun and sage and you walk out into the desert, the desert and it's just so hot and it's so dry and it's like it just dries you out of all of your emotions and you just feel the air like and the wind and the sand and the sun right and the smell of the sage or if it's not a sage desert right it's just like the smell of the sand the smell of the emptiness and that like it drains away all of those unnecessary emotions it, it, it's like a purification process right so different types of healing where you really need something to be put back into you where you really need to be nourished and nurtured right that's more like forest tropical water and earth healing but when you need to be dried out of your emotions that's desert that's desert healing um and so that's what i'm feeling right with it's all air and fire energy right now it's kind of the healing energy of the desert right the healing energy of the desert and this could be happening really metaphorically in your life if there's something you're lacking right if you're feeling like you're in like an energetic desert <laughs> you could be lacking money you could be lacking companionship um like literally anything you feel like you're in lack of it, that's the energy of the desert and just um, 
yeah, so the message here is that the, the desert, no, it doesn't have to be a physical desert. It can be an energetic or emotional type of desert. And the desert energy is healing because it dries you out of like the emotional water that you don't need, right? Because what happens when water sits around for too long and it becomes stagnant, right? It grows mold. It gets, it starts stewing. It starts to smell bad. It becomes fetid right and so that's what happens with our emotions inside of us if they've been all in there for too long like sometimes it's like you need to dry that out right you need to dry out your emotional body to clean out all of the mold and the mildew and any kind of scum that's been growing in there right so that is happening for some people and look nine of pentacles that's what you can be feeling like your arms outstretched feeling sovereign feeling abundant even in the midst of the desert, right? Feeling abundant in the midst of the desert. And I can tell you, if you go out, I mean, people who've lived in the desert their whole lives, right? If you've grew, grown up in the desert, this is probably all sounding obvious to you, right? But I grew up in the temperate rainforest, so desert energy was a new experience for me. And what I learned was that when you walk out into the desert, you know, for maybe you're going for a hike for a few hours, you find that you don't really need anything and nothing really seems you're like, wow, all of that stuff I thought was important. It's just not important anymore. And it's like, as long as you have a couple of liters of water with you, <laughs> it's like, you know, so you, that you don't completely dehydrate. You're good, right? You're good. It really puts your perspective on what's important, right? Really, really, really puts your perspective on what's important. And that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Understanding what is important. <laughs> and then putting down what is not important, right? Ten of Wands, the burden, putting down the burden, putting down the burden, everything that is not important. Wow. And okay, the Akashic Records <laughs> jumped right out. <sighs> and this comes out of, okay, so I just noticed that how I laid these cards out. So before I talk about this, I want to talk about the way the Five of Wands and the Ten of Wands came out in a, you know, top and bottom connection here. If you're feeling the chaos around you, it's like this energy coming up out of this, like burdens from the past, burdens from the past, right? And really with the Akashic, whoa, 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 whoa. I just got super dizzy and my ear just like wom, like wom, 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 and now it's ringing. Sorry, I, I need to like yawn. <laughs> that was super weird. You know when like your inner ear pulses all of a sudden and it completely throws your balance off? Um, That that just happened, so I almost don't know what I was just saying. Um, <laughs> I was trying to say something about since the, this Akashic Record card came up. The, I want to call this like quantum clutter or soul clutter, <laughs> soul clutter, right? Um, noticing the soul clutter or the quantum clutter, the things that you've been carrying around for many, many lives and they no longer, no longer are relevant, right? No longer are relevant, allowing yourself to let them go, let them go, let them go. King of Wands. You know when I said the temple of transformation? <laughs> I was thinking about this card because to me, that's what she's doing here. Sometimes this card comes out with the tower in this deck and she's walking into the temple of transformation. That's how I see this page of wands. So walking into the temple of transformation <laughs> to be reborn, to be reborn. That's essentially actually what Mars is doing as Mars is conjunct jupiter right he's walking into the temple of transformation to be reborn to be purified and to be like born anew when you walk into the temple of transformation right you leave behind a bunch of the things that simply can't come with you because it, it's like um pur purified in fire is, is this energy right purified in fire just like you walk out into the, t into the desert and your emotional body is dried out you are purified right you are you're lightened right you are lightened of all of that unnecessary scum <sighs> faith faith i want to read from the book on this 
I was like tapping this card and then I grabbed this deck and that card jumped out. So what is this? I have not seen that card before. I've noticed, you know, it used to be that when I bought a new deck, I would sit and go through every single card, but now I have so many decks that I kind of stopped doing that and I just kind of get to know the, the deck, the cards as I'm using them. <laughs> and then I find it's a really interesting the way that cards jump out for the very first time when I see them for the first time. So let's see what this is. Fertility and abundance now return. Things will get better. Growth has started. Hold on to your dreams in adversity. I know all will be well. It is in the darkest times that we find it hard to see the light. It is hard to see when things seem hopeless, how we can ever feel hope again. When things seem to fail, it is really difficult to draw up our resilience and stand up again. We learn by observing the seasons that light does return. The barrenness of winter turns infinitely and surely into spring. The ice melts, the days grow longer and the nights grow shorter. Warmth and fertility slowly return to the land. It is hard to have faith in ourselves and the universe. I actually think that faith is the real F word. Faith requires us to let go of our anxieties and have trust, perhaps in something we can't actually see yet. Having a more complete faith in yourself and a higher power to lead you to your greatest good is a solid intention. While having a rigid blind faith does not serve us, it is important to hold on to our dreams and intentions and to focus on the outcome. To do this without taking note of what is happening around us can be folly. Our ancestors would observe nature carefully, looking for the signs of new life and fertility, altering their hunting or planting to best take advantage. Yet they knew that the ice would melt and the soil, damp and ready, teeming with worms, would receive their seeds. So it's not the new moon in Gemini, this full moon in Gemini came up. The answers you need are coming. The answers you need are coming. If you're in that place of confusion and still waiting for something to like click for you, right? This new moon and I mean the Mars-Jupiter thing. It's like this moment of reset. And after this, we're gonna start heading onwards and upwards into the Sagittarius full moon in two weeks, which is one of my favorite moons of the entire year. So I think in about two weeks, right? The answers you need are coming. The answers you need are coming. And <laughs> I love this card because there's been some times when I've been kind of stomping my foot and like demanding answers from the universe, right? Like getting really frustrated just being like, you know, those, those, those moments where you just can't, where you just can't figure out how to how to, how to like be in the moment, right? And you, you can't figure out how to have faith and you can't figure out how to be patient, right? This card comes out and, and I've seen like often enough receiving this card that yeah, sure enough, after I get this card, the answers do come, the answers do come. So whatever problem you're trying to chew on, whatever news you're waiting on, what, like, whatever it is the answer, or like if it's, even if it's like a spiritual, like conundrum you're, you're brewing on, right? The answers you need are coming. The answers you need are coming, right? This Gemini season is the Gemini Sagittarius axis is, you know, an axis of knowledge and learning and understanding. <sighs> Serendipity. It's all going to work out, guys. It will. It will. It will. It will. <laughs> Serendipitously. You know, and with Mercury going direct, that means all of that weirdness, you know, all the Mercury retrograde weirdness of just the vibes being off. It's funny, I, um, this Mercury retrograde I noticed was felt like a little bit different, at least for me. I kept noticing people thinking that, that like there had been a communication difficulty, people going, oh, like, I hope you didn't, um, I hope that didn't sound wrong. Like, I hope I, you didn't, like, I hope you didn't take that personally or like, I didn't mean it that way or like, oh no, like, I hope they didn't sound negative. I kept seeing people everywhere, like absolutely everywhere doing this. And it just kept being like, oh no, 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 no. Like it was all good. So it, 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 it almost seemed to me that like there weren't as many communication problems as usual, but people kept thinking that there were. 
<laughs> at least that that's how it panned out from my perspective right um it, it was really funny but so that type of like anxiety around social interactions that'll start dropping away with mercury going direct and with saturn going retrograde i don't want to talk about too much of that right now but i want to say that i typically really like saturn retrograde right Wow, my, my throat just made a really weird noise. I don't know if the, the camera picked that up. It was like my throat like gurgled really weird. <laughs> um, Saturn going retrograde. It's like the, the pressure from Saturn goes to sleep, right? And he's in Aquarius, right? So that's all this air energy, this collective energy, this um, mind energy. It's like he's taking a nap. He's going to sleep. So when Saturn goes retrograde to me, that's typically like him taking the pressure off right? Saturn taking the pressure off. So I'm looking forward to the Saturn retrograde. I think it's it's typically like it loosens things up. It chills things out. It's going to be good. And it, it's like um, for the duration, I think, of Saturn retrograde, the vibe I'm getting on that right now is going to be... Um, I feel like he won't be hammering home so many hard lessons because we've had a lot of that recently and there's going to be a little bit of break from this and that's going to open us up to this type of serendipity, right? The answers you need are coming. Things are going to be falling into place. Have faith in this, right? Have faith in this. And you are entering the temple of transformation. I mean, you're already in it. You're already in the temple of transformation. What am I saying? Entering it, right? You're already in it. You're about to come out the other side, right? Maybe, you know what <laughs> the feeling I get is that I, I don't know why, like, I don't know why this is, but that Scorpio full moon eclipse that I don't know when we'll be done talking about it because it was so damn intense, right? Um, like th the vortex of it that everyone had to go through this massive purge process, right? I like I got through that like actually a few days before the full moon happened. Um, and it was super intense, you know, like I mentioned, I got physically sick as I was like purging all of this energy. It was like nuts. Um, but I, I got through it a couple days before the full moon. And ever since then, I've been doing like, I've been kind of like floating on a cloud, right? But I noticed that's like, from this reading, like I sat down and I was talking about how, you know, light and breezy I've been feeling, but I knew that not everyone is feeling that way. And I think it's still the lingering effects of that full moon. So it's interesting to me. I'm not really sure why, like some people got out of that full moon vortex like really early and some people are still lingering um and the kind of like what it feels like to me is if you're still lingering in those emotions from the last full moon two weeks ago it's like you got stuck in the wormhole right and how i'm kind of seeing this right now is like there's like a portal there's a portal <laughs> and then like the wormhole in between it, right? Or, you know, in normal everyday terms, that would just be like a doorway, a hallway and a doorway. Right? So some people are stuck in the doorway and that's not bad, right? Like that's, it, this isn't like a comparison game or a competition. This is all kinds of reasons why it's like some people just ran. <laughs> some people sprinted as fast as they could. So like, that's what I did, right? I sprinted as fast as I could to get through that hallway. Like, cause I was like, I don't like this hallway. I'm gonna go, I wanna get through it as fast as I can. Um, maybe that's why I got physically sick as I was purging the full, the full moon eclipse, Scorpio, blah, blah, blah energy, right? Cause I was like, I'm doing this really fast. So I like torpedoed myself through it really fast. Other people are taking a more lingering, path winding around maybe looping backwards right and maybe it's really really relevant for some people to be doing that because maybe you wanted to explore this energy a little bit more right maybe you wanted to make sure you didn't miss anything maybe you wanted to or maybe you just didn't want to have to purge all of it at once right sometimes it's easier you know it's just like cleaning cleaning your house right you could try to clean your entire house all at once in like two hours, right? But then you'd have to go really fast and it'd be really exhausting and maybe you wouldn't get as good of a job done, right? So if you wanted to clean your house over the course of a week, like slowly just doing one room at a time, right? Then it would take longer and you might double back and then you might have to reclean something again because it's already gotten dirty. But you know, there's no, it's just like whatever, right? <laughs> you, you, you get through this hallway, you get through this wormhole as quickly as you like and there are benefits to going fast and there are also benefits to going slow and taking the winding path and it's just however it works out for you. But, you know, this thing about the temple of transformation and having faith that you're going to make it to the end, right? You, you, you're getting ready to pop out the other side. Getting ready to pop out the other side. And ah, the energy is going to continue to shift. Continuing to shift. And just focusing on... Focusing on like frequencies of lightness, right? Of peace, of tranquility, of solitude, of, e of breeziness. 
this jumped out, but I don't, I'll, I'm gonna get two cards. Maybe there's some one card for some people and another card for other people. I got my eyes closed. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna read both of these. This is the one that jumped out. So this is for somebody. If this isn't doesn't resonate, hang with me. I'm gonna read the other one too. <laughs> Listen to the call of spirit leading you to a new way. Greater freedom is energizing you from the inside. You may have been feeling anxious, wondering if you'd be able to figure out the next step you need to take when an opening arises. Recognize this as a moment of initiation before you encounter forward momentum again. New friends and helpers will find their way to you through the law of love and will equip you with the tools and resources you'll need. Courageous soul, as you remain open and receptive to their knowledge and wisdom, honoring your own truth and experience, your pathway will be uncovered. You will emerge wiser and surer of who you are and what you are willing to stand for. Other message. Life's little luxuries. This beautiful meadow with the trees. Oh, the call of duty seems endless, and oftentimes it is. Your soul has been wearied and is in badly need of a playful respite. You are invited to temporarily release yourself from the dreariness of have-tos, shoulds, and musts. No doubt, you will now be given the opportunity to dance with the silly and whimsical things of life. Take in the scenery by inhaling the aroma of everything delicious and spontaneous. So this, this is the two ends of the frequencies of, you know, what I was mentioning, right? You can be feeling easy, breezy, whimsical, taking a break, feeling all dried out and just peaceful and playful, right? Or you can be feeling like you're still working on integrating and releasing and, you know, making it through, making it through that hallway, right? <laughs> Wherever you're at, you got this, right? You got this. Sending you guys so much love and light. Talk to you later. Bye.